What's going on, guys? Snag here, and I'm here with the hecticus Fred, and we're talking State of Origin Game 2. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, bro. How are you? Pretty good, bro. I, I know you're doing good, man. I know you're doing good. I've been watching your guys' pod lately, man, and uh, you and the bro are smiling a lot, man. Those doggies, bro. I didn't know I you were had this... your teeth, bro. <laughs> I haven't had this feeling in a long time, bro. I haven't yeah. been able to show them, bro. But, yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's it's weird, bro, being in the eight and everything, eh? Yeah. No, it's good, man. If you guys win this weekend, too, like, man, this is almost amazing. four. Like, it's this is a huge oh, game, man. Absolutely yeah. crazy. Man, it's um, it's good, man. Like I like I said, I've watched the watched pot a few times last year. Awesome, but this year you guys have a mad pep in your step, man, and I can tell he's a happy man. It's good the content's better now because of it. So. 100%, but when we're, the better you get, the more expectation you have, and when you know, and they just keep exceeding them, like and constantly, yeah, yeah, like it's, like, like, it's not like, like there's it's, been a two week dip or anything, you know, no, what I mean? it's just like, yeah, and like if we do lose a game, it's like really close, and there's so many positives to bring out of them. and um yeah it's like competitor last year bro it's like we didn't even want to record the podcast half the time like <laughs> bro, I you know what I mean? yeah it's... but no we do it anyway because people enjoy people enjoy watching you lose more than they enjoy watching you win yeah they do man especially when it's me losing because yeah. you know i'm always i'm always like super emotional but recently everybody's been loving like seeing us win like i like i stream all the games every week and the game that we had the most was that dogs game where no we way. were pumping the roosters. Yeah, yeah, and there was a thousand people in there. You know what? And then to be honest, we did start to throw that, and then there was thirteen hundred people in here. And no. we were like, <laughs> oh, and everybody. I thought you were gone, bro. <laughs> oh man, if we lost that game, I probably would have cried. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, bro, that was all I want to do is beat those with. roosters. Oh, bro, and then you got them this weekend. So everyone, too, lads, make sure you go and follow Hectic Fred. So it's the Lead Lags podcast at, uh, and it's my what's it, my NRL podcast, right? And so, uh, when yeah. when do you guys actually put your posts up? When do you um when do you put your pod up? What days? So so um so yeah, it's late. It, we put it every every episode comes out Tuesday at six p.m. for the NRL. Yeah. We also do like football and content as well, but it's off season now. But um, yeah, we have a like strict rugby league podcast, strict football podcast. If we ever go down a different route, we'll always be separate. So if you just want to watch the league, like the NRL show. Tuesday, 6 p.m. Yeah, so I'll put the links in the descriptions there so everyone go follow them. They, they need to get to a thousand. Just so everyone knows, you need to get to a thousand uh, a thousand subs to be able to unlock all the features on YouTube and stuff. They're super close, guys, so definitely go do that. Um, they do a lot of hard work, man, and definitely deserve all that extra stuff, so go check them out. All right, so... I appreciate you, bro. Nah, it's all good, man. I know the work that goes into it, man. It's it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. All right, so who who you got this weekend, man? Like, well, obviously you got the doggies, but are you genuinely confident, bro? Uh, like, this is this. I'm probably like these last two weeks are the games I've been most nervous about. Mm. Like, so the, we versed the Eels, and I was uh, super nervous about that game because they had everybody. You know what mm. I mean? And and I feel like Parramatta with everybody is like you know, a, a potential top four team if they, you know, are yeah. all on. So I was super worried about that. And I would have been extremely worried about this game, like if Burden was out. But luckily we have him. And yeah. there's a lot of people, a lot of the re- news around the ground is like kick out will play this week. Mm. So because of what he did to them last time, and we have like a season debut for um of Gerald Skelton, who Monster. looks like, looks like dude, he's the best reserve grade winger that there is right now. So I'm super, I've been super excited to get him in the team because he is off contract at the end of the year. So mm. like that's someone that I don't want to let go seeing Adam Motti leave and do well elsewhere. Parramatta Even though we have Wilson around him, man. Yeah. yeah there's going to be, there's a lot of people were sniffing around Wilson and we locked him up. But at okay. the end of the day, like is Gerald going to want to, is Gerald going to want to go elsewhere to have a chance to play? Because he'll be behind Wilson in the pecking order. Yeah. You it's, know what it's, I mean? so, your outside backs are hectic, man. No, yeah. He looks like a better version of Mikasebo, to be fair. Like, yeah. He, like, he's it, crazy. Yeah, he's he just he's like, he's so strong and powerful. He's mm. just got a, he's just learning league. That's the mm. big thing for him. He's he's a rugby union guy. He was really good. I think he played for Australia in, the, in rugby seven. So, it's just the adjustment period that it's taking for yeah. him to like, his big brother. He has a brother that's like six foot eight that plays for 
the wall the wallabies what? and and he's just always had that rugby union background so with skeleton it's like they're just nursing him up to rugby league level so there's all the defensive things you got to know um the errors because he's like he's played like league before last season he had about three or four like bad play the balls mm. because he's not used to having to play the ball because he plays union you know yeah. what i mean so it's just that period it's taken a little while and they definitely haven't been putting him in even though you know i'm a bit surprised because he's such he's been so good in reserve you're like it's only a matter of time like i really thought they would have played him last week because Parramatta are a big side i thought they would have wanted to mm. use that extra size but wilson did such a good job um but I've been waiting for Skelton to play, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be on that left side against Dom Young. So, and he's been a bit shoddy defensively mm, recently. Very shoddy. And he had his worst game against us. So, I'm right. going to be like, I'm all eyes are going to be on that matchup, and I just think we are going to build that right side yeah, okay. defense for the Roosters. All right. Well, that's my try scorer for the game. Lock it in. <laughs> yeah, but I would, I would put Dom, I would put Dom Young too. Oh yeah, because he because sure. he does have a tendency to like rush in. So, if he gets it wrong, when there's probably a high chance that he does get it wrong defensively, Jarrell Skelton, Dom Young's in for a try. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. And he putting him miss. for a single, yeah, mm. putting him for a single or a double are usually super short odds, but I like. I think there's a good chance of him scoring. Yeah, he's yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, him on that left edge would be nuts, man. Um, I actually watched your guys' reserve grade. I've probably the only reserve grade game I've watched in like six years, and I've watched him play. I was like, damn. But to be honest, I was pretty impressed with the Bulldogs reserve grade team in general, man. Like it was, it was nice. Like similar to the Panthers, they actually played quite similar to the first grade team. And um, I always think that's a good sign when your your grade team comes up, you know, and plays the same way. So when you when someone's out, someone comes in, know their role, sort of thing. So man, I was a bit skeptical on the doggies at the start of the year, but they're warming on me. And you got to tell, so bro. You got to tell all the all your fans, all your. Uh, I don't hate the Bulldogs, bro. <laughs> everyone, bro, I just, I just get so everyone thinks I hate the Bulldogs so hard. Yeah. I just like I just hate Reed Marty, man. This is the only one. You and Clarky, bro. You, Clarkie, bro. Uh, you and Clarky cop it. You and Clarky oh, cop bro. it for hating the Bulldogs. Apparently, bro. I, I I know you don't hate them because of our dialogue him, that we've had. You know what I mean? Like we've met up in like in Brizzy a couple of times as well, and like. Bro, we always have a chat. This guy does not hate the dogs. No, bro. I do not hate the doggies, bro. This is right. constructive he just criticism. doesn't like. He just doesn't like Reed Marnie just... because in the era that you grew up in, bro, he would have got a he would have got clocked in the face a couple of times. It's hard, bro. It's, <laughs> no, it's, that's what they say. Like people are like, um, oh, you know, the new Mick Innes or the grub. I'm like, yeah, but those guys could get punched in the head. So that's why I actually respected those grubs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I love Mick Innes being a grub because he, he used to get cracked in that. Had like Sam Burgess teaming onto him and stuff, but. I'm like, bro, if you can't get cracked, man, I can't respect you, bro. But everyone has a well, uh, everyone has a player they hate, man. And mine's Ray Barney, man. Yeah, Sorry. I think Sorry. he's trying to get cracked, but nobody, everybody's too I, I, afraid to crack him I agree, with the consequences. Bro. Yeah. But I think he's willing. I think Reed's willing to take one for the team to get someone beat. I think he would too, off, man. You know what I mean? Nah, he's he's like, handy. He's actually impressed me pretty good this year. I didn't oh, rate him been, he, way better this year, been, man. He has been one of the best hookers in the comp this yeah. year, bro. He is. He's been a, like. Like from last year to this year, night and day, but all it took was a little bit of help in the middle, bro. Like he no longer has to make so many one on one tackles. He's no longer getting left out in the dry by Pangai and whoever's playing prop. Like everybody is giving him a hand. Mm. Well, you look at it when he was at Parramatta, he was in between RCG and Junior Paulo. Like, yeah. you know, and then uh, Madison maybe or whatever in the middle. Like, that's that's tough. Like, you know, what I mean, you, a lot more gang tackling and big bodies. And then it was sort of. You know, your four pack last year was flimsy. So, yeah, he got hung out hard. <laughs> like, it was bad. A lot of front rows got off their nudie run through Reed Marnie last year, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, like, bro. Sip, bro. Uh, I remember when I remember I put Sipley to score as well uh, against Manly, like in round, like back end of last year. Cause I'm like, bro, everyone is scoring. Everyone. Like, I went to the game against the Sharks, three front rows fucking scored. Bro, it was, you know what I mean? Like, like, it was bad, bro. Um, it was the worst, bro. So I'm like, I saw Sipley. I'm like, bro, I'm putting like 20 bucks on this guy to score, bro. He scored the first try of the game. Yeah, <laughs> he, yeah. he literally scored the first try of the game. I'm like, but I was yeah, easy Hazleton money. Got one. Yeah, it was it was bad, man. But it's crazy how much he's like. He's still missing heaps, but way less. It's good, man. It's good. Yeah, it's uh, what do you? Yeah, just front tour, front row or two away. I reckon you guys are looking real nice. Oh, yeah. uh, they're looking at um. I know for like I know they're gonna be sniffing around Royce Hunt because he came from us. 
he, he was a Bulldogs junior. And like that, that, that Parramatta Ford pack is insane right now for next year. Mm. And there's someone's got to make way. And I think they're letting go of Royce Hunt, but yeah. he's arguably playing better than any of their props. Right he's now. the best prop. Like Hazleton, <laughs> Hazleton was like insane. The first, like the first 10 games of the year. But this last month has been like Royce Hunt's been their best forward easily, and um, right. but they just can't keep him on the team because like all them they've re-signed the Sharks have re-signed every forward on the team except for him. They've probably got so, six genuine starting first grade front rows yeah, in their team, so they got to let him go. Yeah, and, and I think with the Sharks, uh, with South Sydney, probably out of the race for him because oh. they're going after Devellin and. Um, they signed someone. They're signing someone else, and they signed Dodd as well. So what? their yeah. money's gonna be yeah, their money's gonna be tied up, and they were a potential suitor for him. So now there's just not that many teams, and I just got a feeling that Gus, I have, will identify this guy and and get him back to the dogs. And you know they did the same thing with Marnie. Like he started with us, we let him go, mm. then we signed him from Parramatta, and that's probably gonna be the thing here. And and they we've also got this guy from the UK. Um. His name is Tom Amon. Big guy. Mm, yeah. Looks pretty mobile, but I would much rather, like, I would also like to sign Royce Hunt too. Mm. But, Royce Hunt looks like he's had someone whisper in his ear, hey, there's a big contract over here if you show us something. And he's just yeah. going, yeah, watch this. Yeah. He, he, he's he been... looks like he's playing for a contract. He's been, I've always thought he was better than Ueli. I always thought he was low key there, had the best potential, even more than uh, Kafusi and all that. He's, 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 he'd be an awesome signing for you guys, man. But, yeah, yeah, I've always been on like the ULA sort of side of the tracks. Like I've always preferred mm. him, but he's got he's signed up now, and like he just all that guy needs is a, is a clear run of like with injuries. You mm. know what I mean? He just he copped like two injuries via hip drops last year. You know what I mean? So yeah. I I just wish the guy some like good health, bro. He just can't stay on the field. And Royce Hunt is sort of durable health wise. So bro, pretty good. He misses patches, but nothing big. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him in blue and white again. Bro, actually, speaking of the Bulldogs, man, I actually met up with Willie Tonga. Was it two days ago? He's doing some stuff with my son, and bro, get that dude in the front row, bro. Like he was. Yeah, he I was, heard he's bro, massive, bro. I went straight to the gym after because I felt like a sack of like shit, bro. Like, uh, man, he is in the craziest nick like I've ever seen. He had, the reason why it jogged my memory, he was down at the Bulldogs reunion thing a few weeks ago, or whatever. And he yeah, said yeah. it was good buzz down there and stuff, like good things. But Jesus Christ, that dude's on one, man. Yeah, he was there at the para game, bro. So yeah. like, and um, like we had done work for the dogs that 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 um that game as well. Like we were on their their Instagram and everything. So yeah, that was a it's insane experience. And we we're like hoping to get in the sheds, but the sheds were all booked out because oh, yeah. I think a lot of the former players were there. Yeah, but you never know in the future, bro. Right, you know, it would have been. been... But that, that's why I like players, the doggies. That, that doggy zero for me was that was the best, best footy team ever. Yeah, I thing. think so too. Us, I think 06 Bronx, 08 Manly. But mm. 2024 Penrith. <laughs> yeah. 2023 Penrith. Probably, probably, I think the the 21 Penrith, like the one that they won their first ship in, I think was probably the best mm. team before everybody started getting poached. Yeah. yeah. That, that team had like the luxury of burden in the centers, had like kick out happy chorus out you know what I mean? before they all got yeah. pinched so that's 2022 probably... when that cooked para was pretty hectic too yeah, i didn't that have it was... they, they had lost a few but just i mean that was so much better than everyone if that makes yeah, sense I think the t- yeah the 2022 team was is probably the one that you can probably say is the best version of them as well like yeah I they like didn't 20, have the best 2018, players, but, mm. yeah 2019 roosters i think also is mental Ooh. Yeah, that's that's like that. That was like the KD Warriors of like the NRL at the time, bro. So everybody hated them. Everybody hated them, bro. I didn't even watch like that. They <laughs> bro, they won the comp and then just signed Angus Kite and like the best young back row coming <laughs> through. Like it was just not fair. That's so unfair, man. It worked out. Yeah, it is a bit of a KD moment, man. But now that's awesome, bro. But now nah, it's good to see, man. So what what is your final prediction, man? Are you going you going doggies one to 12, 13 plus? I think I'm going to go dogs by four points, bro. Keep it real close. Yeah, I yeah. think it's going to be super close, bro. They still got all their spine, but they're missing a lot. They're missing four forwards. I was about to and... say, if they had their four forwards, I don't think I could give you a shot. Yeah, no. Nah, I mean, if like, they, if, yeah, if we like, if they had their four forwards, uh, it would be it would be really tough because we've them without Spence. That would have been 
it, that, it's, that's the type of forward that would give us a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, imagine that. Yeah, so it goes like Lindsay Collins and Ray Hargraves. All right, we've done that. And then Tyrrell May and Spence come on. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, it's just too uh, much. Like yeah. God help us, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we, are, we are a very small pack as it is. So Spence is the guy that I look at and I'm like, please, like, 20 minutes max please let don't <laughs> don't put him on for too long bro yeah last man. time he didn't play may because of that the send-off that they had oh yeah, so, like, yeah. but we we're already up like 18 0 when the send-off happened so like we we're in control of that game but may was coming off the bench and he didn't or like he just didn't get that many minutes yeah it was like 20 stuff. minutes or something he got yeah, yeah i remember so, i had him in my super coach i was steaming I yeah, that's why people got to understand, like, when you go down to 12, you need that extra leg speed. Mm. And that's why guys like Trebojevic weren't com- wasn't coming on in yeah, Origin. 100%. Because you need leg speed is the most important thing when you have ginormous amounts of space mm. everywhere. Yeah, and lateral movement, the two things he yeah. just does not happen. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, yeah. That's zero weapons there, man. Yeah, yeah no, I'm I'm glad that so we'll we'll get to the uh get to the origin, bro. What was your initial thoughts when you just like saw you know that initial feeling you get when you see the team list straight away? What did you think when you first saw it? Uh like I I definitely like it more than mm. game one. Um I probably like this team for the most part more than the last couple of years, like than any team from the last couple of years. Um I'm obviously a massive I'm a massive fan of Latron Mitchell. Mm. And seeing him in the team is just very refreshing because and I, it calms. It should calm a lot of New South Wales fans down because he's just the type of player that we need, and we've needed for the last couple of years. Um, seeing him there and seeing Moses instead of Hines is just, I can relax a bit because mm. I know what I'm going to get from both players, and like, and same as Dylan Edwards. Like Dylan Edwards, at the end of the day, no matter how good or bad he plays, you know what you're going to get. You know what the minimum worst case scenario is: two hundred meters. Exceptional defense, great support play. No errors. You know I mean, <laughs> and and no and no errors. He made an error on the weekend, but he yeah, just didn't right. <laughs> look a hundred percent on the weekend. Everyone um, was saying just, that. I thought he looked all right. I don't know. Maybe my no, eyes just, tricking he me. He just didn't look as zippy, like mm. especially like that try that best scored. Like he just looked like he couldn't run at full mm. speed. Okay, because the didn't Edwards, well, even though the ball was bouncing away from him, I'm still expecting Edwards to get it because. Mm. That guy's just not normal, bro. Like defensively, mm. it's, like he probably has the best defensive instinct instincts for a fullback in the comp. Probably him and Gutherson. So, yeah. um, like I, I was shocked to see you know that him let in a couple of tries, mm. but I think he'll be in a bit better nick this week. And yeah, he's a big game player, bro. I could trust him. Yeah, and there were these players all over the park on the on game one that I didn't know if I could trust. Mm. You know what I mean? So I feel a bit at ease now. I, f- I think people forget how big, like, the grand final. Like, people sort of fob it off. Oh, he's never, but a grand final is essentially the same. I mean, it's like, it's, I know it's yeah. different, but like, it is that still same, the same size, big stage. I mean, the TV ratings are the same, the crowds are full. You know what I mean? So it's not like it's, uh, you know, a guy from, you know, Cowboys has only been playing in front of 18,000 people and he's never been in a grand final. It's like literally, yeah, like, this is a guy that's been in grand. four grand finals, which means four full finals runs, which means mm. he know what it ta- he knows what it takes to be in a game where it's make or break. Mm. He knows where what, how, what like he knows how to be in a winning team, which is like a full on brotherhood, which is exactly mm. what you need in Origin. At the end of the day, so does Tedesco, but Tedesco is just at the back end of his career, whereas Dylan Edwards is in, is in his prime, and I'd much rather give Dylan Edwards a go, even if it is a make or break game. Because mm. the guy's been in so many now where you can be like, bro, and he's so good in the big games. That, yeah. Like, like he with actually gets to another level. Mm. So um, I'm completely at ease with it. Like, mm. go, son. Like, have a crack. I, I trust him. Mm, mate. And one thing I trust most about him is too is he's not going to slip over six times in crucial moments like Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. It's, I love, I'm the same, bro. I'm a massive Teddy Glazer, but just, he just, slips over so much bro it kills me man i saw the hello sport boys bring it up and i'm like bro i've been saying that for years he just slips bro, over he's, all he's like gerard time. bro slippy yeah, g bro, bro like, like slippy ass he, it annoys me because he it's like when they started giving head contact for like the smallest things mm. he started running so low to the ground yeah yeah and like he's so he just slips he just slips so much because of that yeah like like yeah, and I, look, his passes that go to the ground annoy me more. Oh, yeah, he constantly yeah, yeah. does it. 
because um, he does like, everything at full speed, eh? Mm. Yeah, like he's he's like he. It's like he's Russell Westbrook, bro. He only passes yeah. when shit goes when it goes to shit. Yeah, it's like, like when, stuck when, in when the he era. knows when he knows he's gonna get cracked, he passes it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's like good when analogy. he knows that the defense have got him. Like that's just the Russ, bro. Drive, draw in everybody and dish. Yeah, he's very similar, but because of that, because he's always on the passing on the pressure, they go to ground. Yeah, yeah, you true. I mean? Whereas Reese Walsh is like. The passes barely ever go to ground because he, he knows he's he knows exactly what the defense is going to do before they do it. Mm. I don't have that feeling with Tedesco. Yeah, yeah, you know it's very I mean? true. And he used to be such a prolific tackle breaker, not so much anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. Like that, yeah, I feel that, like Dylan, that, you go. That left arm, that left arm Fender used to have, bro, used to be so deceptive, and he doesn't really have that much. You're right. Like, it's like he's lost yeah. a bit of strength. Yeah, he used to he used to be so difficult to tackle, bro. And it's just like he when you get older. Up. Yeah, he used to, bro. He used to just go through the line when the when there's one or two defenders on him. I'm like, how the hell does this guy do this? But he can't do that stuff anymore. Yeah, you, so when, you're right. I, I can't remember him doing that like any recently at all, eh? Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, his fen was he had one of the best fens in the comp, and mm. nobody would give him credit because they don't go flying. It's like when Katoni puts his arm into mm. you, but they don't make the tackle, and that's at the at the end of the day, that's the same effect, you know? Yeah, and he's just. He just doesn't have that level of strength anymore. Like, or defenses have probably wised up to it a lot more than mm. you know when he's like in his prime and like like you know there's a lot more film to watch on him. They know what to expect from the Desco mm. now. Um, so that's why I'm okay with dropping him. I just if he had a good game in game one, I'd accept it. Yeah, but I don't think he was good enough to keep in game one over Dylan Edwards. Yeah, I agree, man. And like I said, just those slips. It always seems to be a good time, important times. And yeah, like you said, he does pass when he's under pressure. Dylan Edwards will take his shot, go to ground, get a quick play of the ball, find a seam, get a quick play of the ball. So yeah, I'm super happy with it as well. I think, um, I think it's good. I think Madge has sort of just gone like a race game one because of the twelve men and just gone, you know, almost start again. Oh, which is, you know, what. I don't even think he's done that. Really? I, think what, be, what's your I think there's I I think there's so there's so many positives to come out of game one because they went a, a man they went a, like honestly, in my opinion, we went a man down and still dominated uh, like a solid thirty to forty meter a minute period of the game. And right. in origin, a man down to actually hold our own and create scoring opportunities that we just didn't finish and to win that field position battle, I was so impressed with them. It was really that 40 20 from it was really that 40 20 from Cherry Evans that changed the entire game. Well, they were on Queensland was sort of on the ropes until that point mm. from like that 30 minute to mid 60 minute period. Like, I was so proud of the boys, and I don't think Madge is going to want to erase it. I think if we had 13, it's a bit of a different story, he probably would want to, but there's a lot to get out of having such a good period with 12 men in origin where it's like you're not there's no scrubs there's no one mm. you can hide against hide against there's no one you can hide from like you all have to dig deep and they really did and i think that's because they did that even though we lost there's still a lot of positives yeah i'd almost argue that they won the middle for 60 to 70 minutes of the game just the middle third like i yeah. can't remember harry grant having any impact which means you know what I mean? They'll win in the middle, win in the contact, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. um, I think they won the middle is just because they were, there was space on an edge and you can sell on Cobo one on one or, you know, as right. he was there. He was, I think Selwyn Cobo doesn't get his, he hasn't got his flowers from game one. Yeah. I think he was, I think besides Cherry Evans, he was their best player. Everybody's giving Hammer so much credit. I think Cobo was better than Hammer. Yeah. At I the agree. end of the day, Every, pretty much every fullback in the comp and certainly every fullback in Queensland contention would have scored the tries that Hammer did. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I know Hammer had that break at the in the in the first, like, like when Reese Walsh got brain damage, you know what I mean? He made that oh. line break, which was hectic. But that was, you know, at the end of the day, it's cr created by Reese Walsh and a bad read from Suwali'i more than it is Hammer. Yeah, Hammer's yeah. amazing because he's got that speed. He hits a hole, it's hard to stop. But, like, Cobbo was the one, like, where it's one-on-one -on -one, and there's and he's the one sending bodies flying and creating the the ga even more gaps because if you in a twelve man defense beat one guy and then break another tackle you're scoring a try and that's mm. was evident and At he was level. the guy doing all of the tackle breaking you know right he's, he's man 
he's gone to a new level, that kid, man. I, I did not yeah. rate that kid. Like, because I live in Brisbane. Like, trust me, bro, he got his flowers up here. The Brisbane media is yeah. like, hard. Yeah, but, yeah, oh. yeah, 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 bro. It's <laughs> Double just, fist in the bro, like hard. It's, it's bad up here. But they did give him his flowers up here. But I agree, man. He has gone to a new level, man. I've been so impressed with him at, um, um, at, in, in the center position. Like, he's been absolutely nuts, man. It's been crazy. But, bro, I just, just before I forget that. <laughs> That sound that got made on TikTok about... Oh, that was insane, bro. bro. It was so good, though, bro. I've listened to it like 30 times. It's so good. Yeah, Just... every, one guy made an edit. He damned it to me on um on Instagram. And he's like, bro, like, what do you think? And I'm like, bro, this is insane. I watch it. There's like 70,000 likes. I'm bro. Like, Shit, bro. Like, this sounds going... And then I'm, then I'm scrolling on my For You page and it's like, another edit. Another edit. And I hate hearing my own voice, but not oh. this time, bro. Not this time. Uh, no, no, it was it, it was done was so well. It was, it was sick. It I love that the, song too. So I was like, yeah, I never listened to that song before, but hey, it's perfect. Oh, did it? Haven't you? I, no, I had never heard that song until I saw the edit. Oh no way! So, That's in my gym playlist, bro. Bro, it's so good, bro. I was like, man, that is so dope, bro. Yeah, oh, that man. was actually my most viral video ever. So oh, really? That was um, yeah, that Reese Walsh brain damage. I think everybody was watching, bro. People in the states, people. Like anybody, anybody, <laughs> anybody that saw it pretty much watched it, man. And yeah, that's, yeah, it was a, it was cool to have a video that that big. It was unfortunate circumstances, but at least nah, and, was... and Reese Walsh, wait, Reese Walsh saw it as well because he follows he... me. So there's no way he can't. Oh not, no, there's no way he can't not see it, bro. And I'm like <laughs> far out. That's it's and if you look at it, if you look at my like top five most watched videos, four of them have Reese Walsh in it. Yeah, okay, so. So it says, I think the TikTok algorithm just loves Reese. Yeah, it, it does, bro. Anything I do with but, Reese goes skits, eh? But, but yeah, those videos, th those those edits are crazy, man. Yeah. Um, I've just realized I don't have a huge amount of time left, bro. So um let's let's get through it, man. Um yeah. just quick thoughts on Burton. Being left um, out. You like it? Look, I like and I don't like. It. I sort mm. of like I didn't want him to play six because I think Lloyd deserves a crack. Yeah. Um I think I would have I would have picked Burton on my bench because I think having good cover in the halves and the backs are pretty good. Like I think it's a mm. valuable thing to have. Like not yeah. many players can give you cover and coverage in both at a high level. And he's just playing in good form now, so it would have been good to have him. Um, but Connor Watson, look, I'm sort of warming up to him because I know Madge has a plan. Hearing mm. how he talks about him, I can I get the vibe that he wanted to pick him in game one and couldn't because of that throat injury. Mm. And he's got a unique level of versatility that probably like not many, many, not many people have mm. ever had in the NRL. Coverage yeah. at like the guys played fullback, the guys played in the middle, the guys played at, like out wide. Like you can pretty much throw him anywhere and he will know what to do. And played there well. Like he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like he Orbison, well you know what I mean? He's sort yes. of like Orbison where you you can breathe easy putting him anywhere and he'll be mm. like Mr. Fix It. And at the end of the day, look, if he plays a middle, Con a Cameron McGuinness would have been better. If mm. he plays in the on the uh, in the centers or in the halves, yeah. Burden would have been better. But nobody gives you coverage for both. And mm. I think he just like I think it's just a good selection because of how versatile he is. Me personally, I would have picked McInnes or mm. like I would have just picked one to mm. focus on. You know what I mean? And I probably would have picked the center and the halves because we have so many forwards that are versatile. Mm. Like Jerbo can play anywhere in the forwards. So can like guys like McInnes. So if I picked Bert, like I would have picked McInnes, you know what I mean? Mm. I probably would have not picked Yo and picked Cam because I think Cam did really well in game one. I mm. feel like he's it's, it's good. It's sad to see him miss out. But yeah, that's sad, sad to see Berta miss out too. Yeah, I, th I like Burton. I like Burton better just because, like, just say Luai was playing two sideways. Let's say there is no injury, but you're just down six or eight points and Luai's playing two sideways. You can literally just make a strategic thing and say, Luai off, Burton on, run. You know what I mean? And yeah. You just you could actually, whereas you can't do that with Connor. It's sort of like he's just, he's just, you get what I'm saying? It's just more of a one yeah. for one. Whereas if you get Burton on, it's like you've all of a sudden got a big body that can bomb the bomb from the gods and he can yeah, we saw what happened in the grand final when just Cogger started playing a bit more straight you yeah. know to completely change the game that's why I like Burton for better but uh, but either way man I, I like I said I'm the same I love Connor Watson man um, I think he'll do good alright bro who's your man of the match I think it's the real Latrell you think Latrell 
Yeah, I think he'll be man of the match for sure. Ooh. I think he's that X factor that we need, and I actually have him get in a couple tries. So really, like I, 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 yeah, I think he'll be the focal point of the attack. And the way Luai's been playing recently, I think he's gonna really get get him involved. And they've played together as well. So and and he'll be on be the fair, left with Toto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I've got him, I've got him on the left side because Crichton's been playing right side for for club and like. Fuck you! Got, you get good versatility out of him. You get you get good versatility out of him. Some guy that can play both sides. But, Bro, that dude is um, on another. That dude is spaz and man, he's. Oh man, I was I was I always thought Crichton was like a tad overrated. When I I don't mean that in a bad way. I was just like, I think the system helped him a little bit. Nah. Dude's dude's gonna go he's down. Game the player, bro. bro. A big game player, bro. He's. Uh, I just I'm lost for words. How good he is now, man. It's just. It's getting better somehow, man. And he's still like twenty two, bro. Oh, <laughs> How insane, man. Bro, it's 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 wild, man. Absolutely wild. Um, so you, I was just about to ask you what your try scorers were. So so you go on the trail? Yeah, I'm I'm definitely going the trail. I probably will go Valentine as well. Yeah. I do think like I don't know how Latrell so is gonna be because because I think he's gonna be on Val. Mm, yeah, he will. Because if, I, if that well, so, good. Val's got speed, and Latrell hasn't played in the centers for a while, so I don't know how he's going to deal with that speed. Mm. And I think he might, like, I think there'll be like some sort of line break or something where Val gets to use his speed and score. Mm. Um, and I'm pro- so I'm probably thinking those two, and I'm probably thinking Brian Toto as well. Mm. Toto, so yeah. I'm probably going. I'm probably going to go for three try scorers, and they're going to be that's going to be my multi. Yeah, okay. Because I. I don't know who's gonna win. I really can't pick a winner. Like I probably will pick us, but the yeah, I'm just not gonna bet on it. I'm not gonna yeah. bet on it head to head. Yeah, I've I've got tickets to game three, man. I'm usually pretty neutral on it, but I'm like frothing for the blues to win so hard, bro, because I don't want to so go watch UV. a dead rubber. Bro, I'm <laughs> yeah. biased as hell on this one. Blues going thirteen plus lads. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, man, you... I do not want to go watch a dead rubber, man. I would not want to watch a dead rubber game as well, bro. Especially at Suncorp. Like, imagine how how crazy it would be, bro. Right, nah, I don't want to go do it, man. Like, oh, yeah. I know I'll get up for it anyway. Like, I always say yeah. that, and then I'm like, oh, sick, man. Like, but nah, I just got it. I've never. That's one one of the few games I've never been to is a, a state of origin game three at Suncorp, man. So yeah, I'm praying well, that one that actually matters. One that matters, bro. You know, like yeah. I've been to heaps of game ones and twos, but never do a three decider. So. I'm I'm praying these lads get it done, man. But I really do think they got the team to do it. Hey, I really like it. And what blows me about this crazy is like Turbo and um, Cleary can get dropped back into this team, so it looks good for the future. Like everyone's young, yeah. you know what I mean. So State of Origin's alive, lad. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah, man. I need uh, I need Payne Haas to be the best forward on the park, though. Hey, eh? you can't get outshone by Spence and all this, for my opinion. What have your thoughts on him lately? Did you? At origin, like, like I love I love pain, but yeah, he he he. It's like he doesn't play. He's sort of the, the way he wants to mm. in origin, and I think because pain has that rep as the best prop in the game, Queensland constantly want to make sure that he doesn't get going, so mm. they always have bodies ready for him. Mm. I think he does a good job. I I He's don't always think, good. I don't. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not easy to do what Payne Huss does in club footy in in rep footy in my opinion so mm. i'm not too tough on him i think him and spencer looks really good together they have to be on the park I, at the same time at I, some point. I think i think if you put them on the park at the same time because you have to commit so many bodies to tackling pain has it's just going to free up it's just going to free up spencer more and vice versa so i think mad should really look to put them on the park at the same time because mm. that will just maximize how good they are together I couldn't and they're both more. so quick they're both so quick bro so if mm. you make a line break like I feel like they would probably make a line break, but if you don't, they can get ready to get down the park and get ready really quickly. So hundred percent, man. Um, I think those two would work really well together. I yeah, they, they will have a big game too. It's hard because Jake's going to play so many minutes, but they have to play time together and good time, like good 10, 15 minutes, you know, like not just, you know, overlap for a few, Like they need to genuinely yeah. be on the park together at the same time. It's like him and Patty, they're like pistons, you know, 
So yeah, yeah that's uh, that's going to be elite, man. What's going on, guys? All right, here's what happened here. We actually ran out of time on Zoom. Haven't used Zoom in such a long time. And I forgot you can only do 40 minutes if you don't have a premium subscription. So we actually had to recall up hectic Fred there and then we sort of kicked back on so if the chat does seem a little little off we did finish just talking about Payne Haas and Spencer Lino and we tried to kick it off talking about roughly the same thing but do apologize if there's a little gap there guys but hey what do you do I ain't great at technology Spencer and Haas yeah actually right. I want to kick on with Spencer and Haas because um just in the Fords in general so there's a bit of an injury cloud over Liam um Liam, Liam Martin. Martin so who who would you sort of tip to come in would you go barnett or would you put barnett on the bench and start all the kawatu what would you do there if um yeah if so I, play... I reckon madge would start barnett mm. because barnett is like that like bro like just crazy bloke eh? and i think like it's like unlike for like replacement like martin and barnett have screws loose bro mm. And I love big like I think Holokwatu is the best back row on the comp if it's not like kick out or Fafita, you know what I mean? Mm. So I think I think um he's just got and in I think he's just perfect for the bench. Yeah. Like if we have a bench of Spencer and and, and um Olokawatu, it will be really effective. And Barnett, I honestly I would start Schmoller off the bench too. Like mm. we call, everybody calls him Schmolle. Schmolle. He's yeah. from Guildford and all I have mates that went to school with him, they all call him that. So Oh really? Um yeah, and that's his Instagram handle. So no it's way. a lot easier to it's a lot easier he, to say was, than Oliver. Was he actually good at basketball? I heard he was handy at basketball. Was he actually good or is that just what that, the boys told me he was just an in, he was insane at every sport. Okay, bro. yeah. Just one of them. Just yeah, one Crichton of is hate. insane at basketball too, bro. Really? Yeah, Crichton is and uh, but no one, I'm telling you, if uh like if every NRL player versed each other in basketball, Buller would skin them a lot. Like, really? just pump them. Yeah, Buller, oh, Jareem Buller is probably the best. He's a legit baller. Oh, wow. Yeah. No like, way. he, I think, so the story is Buller, Buller went to go play basketball and it didn't work out and he came back to, he came back to NRL. Wow. That's crazy. But GI, GI actually called him to convince him to come back to league instead of basketball. Wow. So, so Buller was like a genuine dual athlete. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, he's got the footwork, man. I wouldn't be surprised at all, hey? He looks, yeah, yeah. He looks like that. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I'd go Barnett to start, but I'm praying Liam Martin's ready, eh? Because he was... I think of... he'll be fine, bro. Yeah, I, think I think he'll be fine. I think it'll be fine as well, man. I was just like, come on, man. It's just the way the Blues have sort of been over the last couple of years. They have to replace someone last minute, so... Praying that he's fine because he's always always brings it sort of thing. But yeah, just just back to Spence and stuff. How do you reckon you? So Jake Travojevic is obviously there to, to play big minutes. How do you get Payne and Spence on the park at the same time? Do you reckon? What do you, what do you think they should do there? See, I probably wouldn't have picked Yo for this reason. I think um, I would have just chucked like I don't mind Jobo at lock, and he sort of has that run first mentality. Like I. The reason I don't like Yo and Origin, and I feel like it, his game translates to Origin as much as it does in club footy, is because he's got he's like a half, it's like having an extra half that's like six foot five, but he doesn't have that run first mentality. I think Yo, like it's hard to get them all on the pitch. I just think I just think you just play Jerbo forty minutes. Mm. Like at the end of the day, like you don't have to play Jerbo sixty minutes, even though we can. Um, I just think you should, but I do think you should get more than 20, mm. 20 minutes, and I just think. Um, but out of all the forwards, I would probably play him like Jerbo and Haas the most minutes. I would mm. keep Spencer to at least like not under 35 minutes because mm. he sort of, he doesn't have a lot of experience having to play big minutes, but, and I think if you limit his minutes, those, you're just going to get more out of him in every one of those minutes, you know? Yeah, I agree. It's a hard I think one. If you play, if you play Spencer half an hour and you play the other boys, you know, like, like you play one boy, one of the like if you play Jerbo fifty minutes, play Haas forty minutes, play Spencer thirty minutes. I think that's a good, it's a good mix. But I think seat Jerbo for about twenty thirty minutes and try to get Haas and and Spencer on the field as much yeah. as possible. Yeah, good. get get a uh, pain and um, Spence on the park when you're looking to really go forward, and then like say you do get out to a lead and you want to slow everything down. That's when you can bring Jerbo back on to just slow down the ruck and stuff like that. 
Yeah. When you don't need to play fast anymore. If you say you're up by 12 or 14, you know what I mean? You don't you don't need as much yeah. go forward. Maybe you're more, more inclined to just slow down there, go forward, then have your own. Yeah, maybe that, that's probably a good way to do it. And Jerbo is the perfect sort of, like a lot of people don't like Jerbo prop. I think he's the perfect prop to have in this team because we have two props. They're just playing on the wing in terms of run yardage, low max on top, or just demolish any winger in, in that area. The only the only winger that can like the only winger that comes close to them those two is Karaz in yeah. terms of just pure yardage, and they put so much effort in and they're such willing runners out of their own end. You sort of don't need another meter. You don't need another meter eater prop. You need well, guys with punch and you need guys that are stable. That we have such a well balanced team. Like so, I think just cons- just based on the circumstances. Like whatever situation we find ourselves in, the minutes will rotate between them. Like mm. if we're demolishing them, like Spencer doesn't need to. Like Jerbo will just be that rock inside to make sure that nobody breaks through and no we'll quick play the balls. Fault comes left, mm. right, and center. Just stop them in. The... Well, if you look at it, like probably only make fifteen hundred meters in a state of origin game. Edwards, um, Edwards, Toto, and Lomax are going to get you seven hundred. Yeah, six hundred on a on Minimum. a bad day. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, like like. It's insane how much yardage we have, and like Tulangi, Tulangi is a big body, and um, Kota, he's a big body as well. But they just don't have that motor in them. They don't pull. And who are you going to kick to? This is this is where you have an issue where, like, all right, at Penrith they kick to Taruva as many times as they can because Mm. you'd rather Taruva run. Then Edwards or, and especially thought you do not want to kick the Brian Tor. Like the the master stroke that Cleary did when we versed them is he put Tor on the side that Burden's on. Mm. So he moved Tor to the right side because he knows Burden likes to kick straight on. Mm. So he will kick it on like straight ahead instead of across field a lot of the time because he's just a lot more confident doing that. Now that screwed us because Burden's kicking a perfect kick. And it's going to Brian Toto, who now gets a 20-meter run up and yeah. makes a line break. You know and what then mean? a penalty every third carry because you have to try to hold him down. It's, oh, it's, <laughs> imp- it's impossible. It's impossible. So now you have to pick your poison, 220 meters, 210 meters, or Edwards, who's probably around 210, 220 as well. Mm-hmm. You still Which have to one take... do you want to kick to, bro? Like... You still have to kick away from like Because just like I just said, the Toto gets you penalties as well. Because he just springs up so quick, they try and hold him down. You get a penalty, now all of a sudden you're attacking straight away. Like you just can't yeah. keep the top all man. He's and because he's so he's bro, he's so like good balance wise and everything. He always gets a quick play of the ball. Always, it's even if he gets so, put on his back somehow. It's I, I've never. It's like it's like Havili, bro. I just you never see it happen. You it's never like Havili him, on the wing. Put on, yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like you tie on juice, bro. That's how I always describe. That's how I always describe. Brian Thor, he really is Matt Utai on juice, bro. Uh, one of the, in that same legendary Bulldogs team, man. It was, he was definitely yeah. one of my favorites, eh? Bro, and he was so, like, Utah was so springy. And I just, like, when I saw Brian, I saw Matt Utah. Like, this guy is stumpy, but, and he's short. Even though Brian isn't that short, he lo- he's actually a lot taller than he looks. But mm. compared to other wingers, he's short and stocky. Yeah. But you just do not want to tackle him, bro. Well, Utah really broke the mold, and so Toto is too. You know, they yeah. break the mold of what a winger should be, you know. But, but yeah, it's it's crazy, man. But, yeah, like, I, I agree with you, man. There's so many metres in their back. I don't think they need to get a ton of metres. It's more about – that's what I really want to see from Payne is actually running, hitting collision and playing the ball quickly, not so much going yeah. for big post-contact metres and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and no, just... I really liked Robson as well because whenever we did get a quick play of the ball, like, he had a really good performance on game one to the point really where good. I'm like, I don't, I don't care if we don't pick Appy. You know what I mean? Because he played so good in game one. If he didn't, I would be screaming for Appy to be in the side, but he did so well that he kept Appy out of the team for game two. Yeah, I, I know um... Madge would be looking at him because mm. Madge coached him. Like, he won Madge a comp technically because he mm. played in that. He played for Luke in that grand final. So, they, like, I was shocked when he didn't get picked, but Robson did what Madge wanted him to do. He was looking to scoot every chance he got. He was getting good meters in those scoots because mm. he is pretty zippy and he's pretty strong. Real like, strong. Like, Hello Sport call him Pex for a reason. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he's got, got good I, Pex. I think he doesn't look great at um, the Cowboys because they don't have that super 
middle anyway. Their edge forwards are pretty good, but you know what I mean. That doesn't. He doesn't have much to run. Terrible, off. bro. Yeah. Their middle forwards are the worst. Are the worst in the comp. Probably. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Um, so like, I don't even though... get to see that running game too much from him. What do you think of Griffin name? By the way, I love him. One week I'm like past the next. I'm I'm, I'm on the fence yeah, with him he... a bit, bro. Dude, if he can, because bro, it's such bad news about Flegler, eh? Like, I think if you're looking for future Queensland props, if he can, like, be more consistent. I think the name's a Kiwi, a bro. More, is Griffin name a Kiwi? I'm pretty sure he's a Kiwi, bro. I'm pretty sure he might oh, have. All right, then f- forget about that, then. Uh, he just No, because like do you know why you said that? I thought exactly the same thing. I'm like, bro, this dude's a little Flegler. And I'm pretty sure I looked it up and I was like, oh, shit, yeah, oh he's played with the yeah, Kiwi. Yeah, New Zealand. Far yeah. out, bro. I did not know that. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's started or played. I think maybe he played, like, you know, when they didn't play their full team or something. You know what I mean? When they played, yeah. you know, yeah, like yeah. Ireland or Lebanon or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was um, yeah, I was like, oh, damn, he's a Kiwi, bro. But, no, I thought I was, I was exactly the same train of thought as you, yeah. bro. I was like, he's a little flegler. And then um, I was like, oh, man, Kiwi. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I would have never guessed it, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, man, but, <laughs> but, no, he's been he's – been, Really improving this year, but yeah, their middle forwards are bad. That's why I'm so confident against them, yeah. against them. If because we got them twice this year, yeah, still yeah. have to verse them twice. So I'm looking at those games as a game that we could potentially really like because mm. we're beating a lot of teams in the middle, even though we are undersized. At and least holding they're like banking, the and they're banking on like that 30 minutes from Jason Tamalolo to be insane for them to like, and he has been really good in recent times mm. in those 30 minute stints, but. If he doesn't, they really struggle. So, oh, it's so sad, bro. I just went I feel and bad for Rob Tamalolo's highlight reel from a few, from when he was in his prime, and bro, he was incredible, man. Tom yeah, Malolo. prime prime J- Tamalolo was up there with the best forwards to ever play the game, bro. Like Sam Burgess as well. Like those, those two, two were just like statistical anomalies. Those two. Yeah, it was honestly, bro. I don't even think a goal like Payne Haas has reached. Like how good he was at that point. I know he's there's a lock, his props a bit different, but just as far as middle forwards go, I don't know if Payne had that footwork or anything like that. It's look, yeah, that, oh, look, Payne, he's definitely been showing it a little bit more the last couple mm. of weeks when he because Payne doesn't go sideways a lot, mm. but if he, I think he should like, bro, do a workout with the entry for feeder, learn how to go sideways a bit more because mm. nobody went sideways better than for feeder, like Andrew Feeder, yeah, yeah. To, that guy would go sideways fending guys left, bang, right, and bang. center. And, and, and like, he was one of my favorite props ever, Andrew. And I think Payne last year probably had the best season of props ever had because unlike every other prop that's pretty much ever played, the guy dropped the ball twice and gave away two penalties in a whole season. Bro. He, he, like, he was... like and, and barely missed a tackle the entire year. I think he went nine games or 10 games straight without missing a tackle. Like, props don't do this stuff historically. Yeah. I, I remember all the I, Blues need is him to keep developing, and that need we need that to translate into Origin. Yeah, I um I did. I sorry, Brit. Like I'm going to rip on the Bulldogs for a sec here, but there was a game yeah. the Bulldogs played, and um it was towards the end of the year, and I worked there, and they uh, they made more, they missed more tackles in that game than Payne did in the whole year. The, the two starting yeah. front rows for the doggies, and it was like oh, we, that's it. Well, I'm not ripping the doggie. I'm just telling you how good Payne was. No, 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 that rip is... them because because they're that bad. <laughs> they, they were that, that bad, bad bro. Shit. They were like, that bad, bro. Our, our props, like I wanted to vomit watching us. Bro, bro, it was it was horrendous, man. It was so bad. Like it's that's why I'm like, how the hell are we the best defense? Like, def- how have we conceded the least points in the entire comp, bro? Even yeah. though if we got a buy and Pen- we've got like one less game played than Penrith, sorry, one more game than Penrith has played. Yeah, to be even in the mix at the top, oh, bro, is it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's that's like- why, bro. Josh Curran is the most like probably one of the best signings of the year. You, you've I got two or three of the think, best signings of the year. Yeah. Well, I think Curran should be, pop, without a doubt, number one, bro, because he's just single-handedly fixed mm. everything. I, I personally think that second half of last year of the Bulldogs is the worst f- effort from a forward pack I've ever seen. Like, you oh. know what I mean? It was it was, it was was putrid. But uh, Because yeah. after Origin... And to turn Tavita it around have, the way it is? Yeah. So good, Tavita man. did not have one good game after Origin. There was the two games before... He played Origin. We are like he was leading the charge, right? But we would only play good if Tavita played good, and he had about four good games in yeah. the whole year. He had one um, real good one right before Origin. I remember that, and then that was yeah. about it. Yeah, that was the Titans game, and I'm like, oh, this guy, man, this guy, we're finally getting his money, our money's worth. Nah, nah. And now he's coming <laughs> off the bench for the Dolphins. 
<laughs> You'll probably carve up too. Uh, <laughs> Under Wayne, bro. He loves Wayne. Yeah, he loves Wayne, bro. He gets the bestie out of him. Um, all right. So thoughts on the Queensland team. Let's let's not even really worry about the the starting thirteen because we pretty much know what we're gonna what get it from is. them. Yeah, what you're gonna get from them. Um, what do you think about the bench, bro? Looks light to me. Yeah, like Kate Wilk, Fusi, Mo. Brent. Yeah, I, I think I think they all. I think Kafusi and Kate will play bigger than their than their size. Mm. Um, but like Fodder Waker, he he's a big guy and he he's pretty mobile. But he hasn't been in that good form this year. Mm. Like I picked him up in draft, bro, and I'm like, bro, this guy. Like I expect him to do a lot mm. when Tino went down. Me too. But he just, but everybody else has sort of stepped up. Not him. Like he sort of stayed the same at the same level and it's worse than he typically has been um so i was really expecting more from him and i don't if they're relying on him i don't know how like they they are if a prop goes down they're a bit screwed that's that's sort of the vibe that i get and that's why i think selwyn didn't get picked i think they have to go as big as they can in the middle but they don't have anyone else i mean if, even if you look at the reserves trent liero helen lukey gagoy like there's no yeah. one there. They're light, bro. Um, I'm, I'm shocked here that Luke is even in there. He had sort of one good game this year. Like, I, they're, maybe they're nursing him up for the future because he does have the makings of a future yeah, origin like... player. And he's in the, you know, at, at this point, like the academy of back rowers, which is North Queensland, because they just know how to make back rowers. And they just know, they just got, they're just stacked everywhere, bro. If you need a back rower, just sign someone in the fringes for from yeah. uh, you know of that of that Cowboys roster, and you'll be all right. Like Dolphins have got Finny Fuyaki. That guy looks like a tank, bro. You know, so they're so good. Like so, Luki has the makings of a future back row for him, like for Origin. But I wouldn't have picked him now. And I like, but if you're looking for a prop, there aren't that many available for for Queensland. Like you'd sort of be looking at like the Corey Jensen's, the like guys that are just playing a bit mm. higher level than that like oh, that are just in good form now like Corey's yeah. actually done a decent job this been year good. Mm. and but like Flegler hearing is that his career might be over is devastating like, I can't believe no one's talking plays... about it I know like dude that's a that's gonna be a loss for the game bro the way he plays man bro, he's, he's just man. always yeah he's a good player man I feel bad for him I really do it's, it's... and I, I wish that guy a speedy recovery and I hope yeah. that he gets back s- sooner rather than later but it's not looking good. Yeah, it's it's so, uh, it's bad, bro. I'm praying. He's, yeah, so yeah. Queensland, I think they're going to be looking at like they they should have picked another sort of prop option on on mm. that in that reserves. However, yeah, I, I just feel like they're going to play Kafusi there. Mm, I, like, I think they'll probably chuck him in the middle, or like maybe chuck someone else at lock and play Paddy at like Paddy's pretty much another prop. Yeah, but. If you move him out of lock, you lose that offensive versatility you get from having so many guys that can ball play. Yeah. Like like you like you really have so many attacking weapons on Queensland and guys that can like because when Yo's playing, everybody knows when Yo's getting the ball and when Yo's not getting the ball. Whereas when Queensland plays, you don't know when Pat Carrigan's gonna get the ball. You don't know like they just throw guys into every action that they they throw a lot of different guys into a lot of different actions. It makes it really hard to sort of keep up with what Queensland are doing. If you yeah. throw, and I feel like if you take Carrigan and put him in prop, you're going to get what you get from Pat Carrigan. But mm. I don't think you're going to get that attack and versatility from any other sort of mm. option that you have there if they play lock. I think yeah. Cape will, like uh, Cobo's not playing because apparently Darren Lockyer said Cobo said he he can't play. Mm. And it, I I don't know if you watched Brisbane last week. I needed Cobo to score for a grand, mm. and he just looked like there was something wrong. Yeah, okay. Like like I haven't seen a lazy effort like that from Cobo this year. He yeah, just looked like active. he was in pain. He looked mm. like he was in. The guy looked like he was injured. Like, and they're saying that he's getting shots to play every game. So I don't. I think it was actually Cobo's decision partially to not play this game. Yeah, I'm not. I, can't, Darren Lock, I saw an article where Darren Lockett said it was Cobo's decision not to play. Yeah, I saw that too. I, I'm just trying to. I was at Broncos training yesterday. I can't remember if he was there. I was trying to think if he was there or not because obviously the Origin players weren't there. But, but yeah, it's, um, I, I I do believe that. But at the same time, I also think they were definitely a little tactical. worried about a little worried about how easily New South Wales went through the middle. Beat them up in the man. middle. Yeah, I yeah, think they needed more. The bodies. thing is. The thing is, man, is that's not really going to change now. 
Like it's with, I agree. with this with who they replaced him with, is it really gonna change? Like they picked Cape Ball because he gives you coverage in the back row, but he's also played in the centers in origin level. But honestly, for the most part, like I know Cape Ball scored in one of the games, but for the most part, we sort of targeted him and bullied him. And right now the way he's playing well for the he's playing well for the Warriors, but he just doesn't look as quick as he did at Brisbane and at Penrith. So oh, yeah. I doubt that he'll be able to play like he did a decent job before, but I doubt that Capel will be able to play at the same level as he did before. Oh, I, I don't in the think centers he if he gets put there. I, I couldn't agree more. Everyone's like, yeah, he's done it before. I'm like, bro, like I watch Warriors games, bro. Like he is I hate using this word because you're talking about that. He looks close to washed, eh? Like, he looks really oh, bad. I, I know no, it said sounds harsh, I'm, but it looks I'm like not, he's uh, at that almost washed point to me. It looks, doesn't look good. Yeah, he's bad. on the decline a bit. Yeah, yeah. Wash is probably I don't think too he's harsh. On the decline. Yeah, I don't think he's on the decline too much. I just think he's slower. Mm. So, if you're going to throw him in the centers, I don't know if we'll be able to do the same job as before. I, I almost and certainly I, couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it's just, it's just the, like, this is. Got like Queensland's first 13 is as good as you can get, but oh. it does have weaknesses. And that's why I'm so confident about Latrell Mitchell playing because he's the right, he's the perfect guy to exploit the issues that you guys have. Mm. You genuinely, if he runs over Valentine Holmes, which he will for certain, have he will have an he will like Valentine Holmes will have a nightmare matchup here. They're probably gonna hope to, if that happens, throw Capo there. But they've li- he's literally versed Capel before. Mm. So, like, he knows what he has to do. And I just don't think you have anyone to plug that hole. No. And Kafusi, I think, will be used as some sort of middle forward. I think it'll be middle, yeah. And, I, and, and they're hoping that his level of aggression and toughness will translate to, like, it being a sort of, like, better performance and mm. will sort of make up, like, will sort of... You know, he's a smaller... Front rower in that case, so they're hoping that aggression and that uh, mm. that attitude just play that like Jerbo, just chop dudes, you know, yeah. like just yeah, yeah. Just, just play in the middle, chop dudes. But the problem with him is yeah. penalties, bro. Like oh, you put him yeah. with big boppers, he's gonna try to hit him hard, and that guy hits, he gets it wrong a lot, a lot, bro. Not in terms of missing tackles, but in terms of clocking people high and getting and late. Like that guy was suspended half of the season last year, bro. Yeah, he hits so, him late when they turn their back. He's pretty bad. I'm yeah. just looking through the Queensland team. I don't think you could build much of a better team one through fourteen, eh? But it's just when you yeah, go no. after that, it's well, like if so, let's put it this way: if New South Wales win this one and they lose some players, they're going to be skinny as gonna... like yeah. It's gonna be but bad. you guys but Queensland always gets it done. No mm. matter when there's no matter what the hell their circumstances is like like their team should not beat ours on paper, but yeah. they always like rugby league isn't played on paper, it's played up here and in yeah. here. You know what I mean? Like that you gotta have ticker, you gotta have heart, you gotta have mongrel, and at times New South Wales haven't had that. Last year I did sorry, last game I actually did like our ticker and mongrel and like, you know, because they, they say we don't have that and that's sort of why we don't get Origin. But mm. that team last year, that, that sorry, that team a few weeks ago in game one had so much mongrel and so does this team. That's why I really like McInnes because if McInnes was a Queensland, they would have been getting picked three years ago because yeah. he's that Origin type player. That's why I'm a bit upset not to see him in the team, but I don't doubt that Connor Watson can be that same type of player, similar attitude. The guy's mentally strong as well. Like you can't overcome that many in- injuries mm. over in a, such a short span. Like that guy's career is riddled with injuries, yet he keeps coming back. Doesn't want to give up. You never hear talk about Connor Watson potentially retiring because yeah. he knows he's like it's he's tough mentally. Uh, I just that bad. This game Origin's always one in the middle. Typically, or not always. Typically, it is. Um, and I'm. You're just gonna have to. I don't know if you can, if you if this game gets into an arm wrestle, whether Queensland will be able to mm. withstand us with 13 players on a Latrell Mitchell. Like at the end of the day, all you have to do is put Latrell in a position to succeed, which is get him inside your 10 or your 20, like uh, the, the you know, and and give him early ball. At the end yeah. of the day, that you give him early ball, and you know what you're gonna get from Latrell. It's all up to what the defense does. And yeah. he's so good at reading what the defense does in front of him. And he's so good at breaking that first tackle and making everybody scramble. Mm. That the cards are in our hands. And mm. I like 
I like the odds that we have of winning. I do, yeah. I just, I was just looking. I'm just looking at the two forward packs side by side, and you like, you know what I mean? Because I, I agree with everything you said. Like Queensland just sort of bring more mongrel in the middle, but really looking at the pack, there's not. I actually don't think that. Like the only, if I was lining up against these guys, the only one I actually a little worried about would be Lindsay Collins. Like he, he's yeah. so good on the weekend, bro. Like so good. But besides that, yeah. like I look at it, it's Cotter's like 90 kilos max. Sue is solid, but Nano is solid. But there's no, there actually isn't a ton of mongrel there. I mean, the oh, New Cotter's, well. Cotter's all mongrel for me. Oh, like, yeah, he like, is. He is. But like, that's I, always, I, but yeah, Carrigan, I know what you're talking about. It's then, not it's, like, there's, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel it's like, you know, as mongrelly. Like it's, it's, they'll still gang tackle, they'll still be crazy line speed, all that sort of stuff. But it just, there's, you know, when you just get that impression and you just see a team yeah. and you go, oh, that's scary. I just looked at it and I didn't get scared. And I'm not running yeah. out there, so maybe that's why. But you get what I'm saying. I'm just sort of looking yeah, at yeah. it, and I'm like, oh, like there's, there's nothing no there. Big that's... imposing figures anymore, bro. Yeah, that's no Flagler. That's just killing it. There's no, you know, yeah. It's just, um, but yeah, I just look at this. I keep looking back to it, and I keep scrolling across to Payne Haas, and I'm just like, I think he has to be the best forward on the park, man. I really do. Yeah, bro. He's. He I really agree. Does. But uh, yeah, but yeah, no. He can't get outshone by guys like he can't be outshone by Gerbo. He can't be outshone by well, Spencer's hard to outshine. But you get what I'm saying. He just really has to be out now, the best forward on the park. And I think New South Wales get this comfortably, not comfortably, but yeah. But yeah, like I think it'll be a lot. I think it'll be a. Uh, I think there'll be a lot more points for us than game one, and I do think that so many more points. Um, in this team. Yeah, I think it's just team. This team looks like a team that yeah. has what it takes to win this game. The, re- the reason why Payne Haas has to be the best player and the best forward and so damaging is not because he will break the game open. It's because the dude that takes the next carry is going to have an easy carry. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, if exactly. he can draw in the three bunty dudes, effect, bro. Exactly, man. Just, it's they just call it the bunty effect. The bunty if you have effect. gravity and you take in four or five guys, you know, especially on the line, bro. Yeah. You know, if like the bunty effect is he runs three, four guys in the tackle, which means you get to play the ball and spread it quickly, and there's more space you know yeah. what I mean that's why Spencer has such insane gravity yeah like I really like I honestly think he might grab a he, he's so close to scoring before yeah last game like Hammer did a mad try seven, but I think he could really bust through again I, this I do too man I might put him in why not yeah I mean I'm not taking anything away from Carrigan but a lot of his success he is running after a pain ass like you know what I mean yeah, like, yeah. the IQ as well to know when to come in behind the ruck and all that sort of stuff and he's a big strong guy but I don't think he'd be getting those sort of a lot of those meters at another club. Possibly, he probably would. He's a monster, but yeah, like yeah. Payne has to just be boom, 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 and then every other carry after that's just easy. So, yeah. What I, do you I, think about the halves for the Blues, bro? I, I like it. Like I genuinely think Mitch Moses is the best seven behind Cleary. So I don't mind that. I, I didn't mind Luai. I think I mentioned a little earlier in the video. I didn't mind Luai getting another crack. But I loved the idea of having Burton on the bench if he was going too sideways. Because he, yeah. he, if you do jam up and in and there's no movement, he, he wants it to janks off his left, janks off his left, gets tackled. Um, I'm not a Lua hater or anything like that, but he can play too sideways. So I, lo- I love the idea if there was like cover there. But with no Cleary, I mean, what else can you do? At but, least this week, we've got a long distance kicking game. Round yeah. like game one, we really struggled when we had a bad set. There weren't that many bad sets, but Nico kicked like absolute shit. And yeah. I know you know what you're gonna get. If we have a bad set and we're got a kick from our 30, you know where that it's gonna be a much better kick. Yeah. And a much deeper kick than like even like he has a longer distance. He has probably had the has the the best long distance kicking game that the blues can pick from without Cleary there. I think he's got the most accurate long kicking game. Yeah. Like he he'll he'll bomb it and he'll he'll drop it like, you know, like like right Burns is bigger it. and stuff like that, but there yeah, he'll he'll kick from his thirty and drop it, you know, like a meter out, right on the really, ten. It's yeah. just like Jesus so Christ! It gives me like too. that was a big <laughs> thing. That was a big thing because we didn't have a good kicker on in game one, and you got and like Queensland had Cherry Evans, you know. Yeah. So like Cherry Evans, like we finally have someone to match his kicking game. Maybe like especially if we have a bad set, and if we have a good set, he's so good short range as well, oh, kicking bro. bombs, kicking. Kick it to the wingers, kicking grubber kicks in behind it. Yeah, he's, especially he's, he's kicking games beautiful, man. Yeah, I yeah. can't. I um, I feel like this. 
The also, asylum half pairing is a lot better than game ones. And just pinpoint for Lomax too. You know yeah. what I mean? Just he'll get he gets that perfect height. You know what I mean to Lomax because I don't think I don't even think Ben Hunt uses him properly. You know what I mean? I think he kicks. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I think like he recently he's been kicking like crap, bro. bro <laughs> so bad, bro. But the first six weeks, bro, he's kicking on a string to him. Honestly. But now it's. A, it, but the thing with Moses as well that he's just so fast. His support play is always exceptional. Yeah, and he makes a lot of line breaks. Yeah, and plays eyes up footy. Loves going short. So we well. we typically don't have a halfback that likes to play short side and mm. eyes up footy. So I'm keen to see what he does. Yeah, I'm so excited, bro. I think it's going to be so good. I, I don't think I've been more excited for an Origin game, man. Yeah, I'm jaded up, bro. I'm so amped, bro. I've been waiting three years for I've been waiting three years for the troll to play, bro. So. Yeah. You know, something always goes wrong. And I agree. So like, I'm just keen. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't have picked him for game one. He, I didn't like his body language and that, but he's ready. He looks good, man. He looks so nice the last couple oh, of weeks. He's kicking game as well, bro. Like, uh, we, you can use him like we used Burden a couple of years back now, bro. Yeah, swing in. He's ball. kicking as one of the last two games, bro. Yeah, he's... Because he, they can't, it's hard bomb. to catch his bombs, bro. They're wobbly. Mm. In the MCG it's, with the wind swirling and when it's damp and yeah. wet and cold. A lot of lot, big crowd too. Oh, you wouldn't right. want to be under that, bro. Reese Walsh doesn't have the nicest hands. Yeah, it's uh, he's dropped a couple. Yeah, he drops a lot, but it's funny though. He always seems to catch hard ones. If he drops the easy yeah. ones, you know what I mean. Yeah, you yeah. put one up here and he catches it. You put one on his chest and he'll drop it. I actually don't think Reese Walsh has bad hands. I think he tries to do stuff before he catches the ball because he's so fast. You watch. Yeah, him no, he's the... always thinking three steps ahead. So and sometimes then he'll go he to do it. He side caught... of the ball. Yeah, he hasn't caught the ball yet. I actually don't think he's got bad hands. He's just yeah two. Yeah, trying to do too much sometimes, but yeah, his hands are yeah. actually beautiful. But yeah, so man, you got winning, bro. Yeah, I'm going. Like I said, I'm going hella bias, man. I'm going New South Wales 13 plus, man. <laughs> no, Honestly, I, think, I, I, I think so too. Yeah, I think. Um, I think I think they can blow them off the park. To be fair, like I, I, I genuinely think New South Wales have more players in good form. I do like the kicking game. I do. Like I said, it's not exactly the team I pick, but one thing that gives me the most confidence is um, Madge, man. Like people don't realize how hard the Aussies whooped that Kiwi team in the Pacific Championship. Tinkered with the team, boom, came on, put thirty plus on the Aussies. That's that's a, to me a harder feat than, you know what I mean? Like getting the, getting the yeah. Kiwis to pump the Aussies by thirty after they just got beaten a week before is. I don't think no one really talks about it. I'm like that is crazy, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, nobody puts that much onus on a like on Test football, but. Beating Australia by thirty is something insane. With with the team you just got cooked, like that's yeah, like so that shows me he can um he can make the right adjustments and looks all good to me, man. He gets so, him up to play, bro. He gets him up to play, but yeah, I got the Blues thirteen plus as well. Yeah, bro. nice man, awesome. Yeah, we're good, man. I'll go back to neutral for game three, bro. But I'm putting yeah, my Blues. Well, on yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might you might not want to wear. I've got to walk these streets, colors, bro. I've got to walk these streets, bro. You need security if you wear the Blues, bro. I want to be able to go to the Caxton and not like yeah, wake up in hospital. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I yeah, I've always been a bit neutral with Origin. I just love the watching the highest standard of footy, but now nah, I'm, I'm all in on the Blues on this one, man. So yeah, I'm excited, man. But yeah, anything else you want to add quickly, bro? I got a bust in a no, minute. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just like I, just, like I said, I have probably got Latrell Mitchell getting a meat yeah, pie so in this got, one. So you've got Latrell for a try. Who do you have Thought for man of the for match? A try. I got Latrell for man of the match too. I think Latrell he's gonna be the, the one. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna like twenty one twenty one Latrell was as good as twenty twenty one Turbo was, bro. Like yeah, and yeah. and yeah, I think I think he's gonna be such a focal point of the attack that he'll get man of the match. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too, man. I think they'll go to him a lot. And like you said, if he does start putting up bombs and get um, Rome a little bit as well, yeah, you know, I mean, you get his hands on the ball a bit. But yeah, I'm excited, man. Bring it on, I'm go excited to too, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you streaming and everything as well? Uh, I I still don't know what I'm doing yet. Like yeah. by default, yeah, I will be streaming, but I might be doing a collab with um a couple like someone else as well. Just, yeah, cool, cool, cool. So we'll have to see what happens. I'll put your um kick. Um, username in there too, so people can follow you on on Kick as well to follow your streams uh, and stuff in the description of the I video too, lads. You, so. No, awesome, man. I'm excited. Oh, bro, thanks so much for coming on, man. Like I said, we have to do this again from time to time. Maybe some big big games before some big doggies games when they're in the finals, maybe or something, bro. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. bro. Just from time to time when you got some spare minutes and stuff. It's good, man, because I don't really have many people to talk with up here, so it's good to actually chat footy with someone rather than talking myself, bro. So yeah, bro. Yeah. And if you come down to Sydney, bro, let me know. Yeah, I'll do something. 
I'm definitely in. I'll I'm get you. In. I'll get you next to me, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, games, yeah. You know what I mean? So, hey, Dan, that'll so, be awesome. So man. let me know if you come down here. All right, done. Let's do it, bro. All right, awesome. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you on the next one.